Hello everyone, it's your instructor Victor Campos. It's time to talk about the final lecture to get our project working. Now one quick thing before we do the background music. Uh, when you were uh, adding your sound to your creature here on the scene three hall right as you tested it, you might have noticed that actually the sound didn't play as good as it could have. So here's one final thing to fix that. Um, if you double click to edit your your creature object, uh, we're actually going to uh, move the music layer uh, out of the creature to the main timeline. So you can right click that music layer, cut the layer, return back to the main timeline of Hall 3, then right click Paste Layer. We want to have the layer outside in the main timeline. You'll have to extend your timeline there. F5 to frame 95, and now the sound is attached to the music layer in the main timeline. It's, and to also set it to stream. So then uh, select that sound layer and change the property over to sync stream so that it synchronizes with the, the timeline that you've got there. and it shouldn't replay anymore. So it seems that that's going to be the best result for having the uh, the creature sound. OK, on to the main music. So I'm going to go back to S Start. I want to have background music at the title screen here, inside of the help screen, and then um, a different sound as you go through the levels, and then a final sound uh, when it's game over. So what we're going to do is set ourselves up in the library first. We need to give linkage or instance names to our various sounds, and I'll do them all at once. For dash is going to be the sound that I'll use for the main title. So right-click that, Properties. Actions, export, we'll call this title, news. So we were using SND for simple sound effects, and we'll use MUS, muse, for full music. This will be our title, music. So we will update that, and we'll click OK. If you get the pop-up, remember to just uh, click OK on it. It's coming will be the sound for the main action. And that does build up to get scarier. So properties for that one. Export. You can call this main muse. Update that. OK on it. And then finally, we've also got the, the rain sound. When it's game over, especially when you're dead. So properties on that. Action script export. Let's say end muse. Update. OK. Save. So those um, music tracks have linkage, and now to start to add the music at the beginning of the game. So I'll open up my Actions panel on the main. I'm going to zoom in here. So at the end of the code that is currently there, we'll start to set up our music. Start music code and music code create a variable to store our title music the ar mus title colon title mus 
So exactly as we were doing for sound effects, we need to then create a new instance of that music object. We'll set ourselves up for this to play in a slightly different way because it has to be controlled based on, it has to play constantly in the background and it has to be controlled if we exit or re-enter the app. So then we will say, Muse title play colon sound channel equal to muse title dot play starting at position zero milliseconds playing ten times. So we're doing this differently than before where it's muse title dot play, but we're storing that in a sound channel object so that we can turn it on and off. Var muse title play, let's say title pause colon number, and that's equal to at the beginning zero. we've got here set up a way to control the playback of the music set up a way to keep track of when the music was paused well after that we want to say sound mixer dot stop all when the game starts stop all music that may have been playing now this will make more sense as we go from scene to scene because a sound may bleed over to another scene so we will have this stop all command to make sure that the music is stopped Okay, so we want the music to start to play in the event that the project gets loaded up. So we've got our we've got our function up here that we had uh, sort of as a just floating around waiting for us. Our function music activate. We had a trace command that said the music should activate. So we'll back up to that function. Function music activate. We'll say music or muse title play muse title play is equal to muse title dot play muse title pause comma 10 when the app when the game loads, play the title music from the last pause point. In the very first time, pause point will be zero, so starting at the beginning of the sound. Well, sometimes we will deactivate, sometimes we will exit the app, and therefore we need to start to replay the sound at that pause point. So setting ourselves up here for deactivate after the trace, but before return zero. Muse title pause is equal to muse title play dot position. So have it tell us at what millisecond did we exit the game, store that sound, store that number stop playing any sound so sound mixer dot stop all and return the value not zero very important here return muse title pause so after we check the position of the music store it store at what millisecond we paused the game 
stop all sound that may be playing and then return the value of the pause point. All right, so I'll test this on my device and see if music plays in the title screen. All right, so as you can hear, the sound is playing when the game is running, and I'll press the home button to go back to the device. It should cut the sound, and then I'll return to the game. It continues at that point. Okay, so dealing now with our help screen. When a person visits the help screen, they're going to return to the title screen, and the sound might not be synchronized. So we need to add something simple here to the help screen. In this function go title, we've got our note to do play music in S start again. Okay, so that was our note, and now we will do it. Well, this is going to be exactly the same as what we had on the other function which is from act music activate we need this line muse title play set it to play based on the pause moment so in the help screen right before we return to the title we set our we set our play based on the the moment when we return and that's it for help now when you visit help and return back to title the music should continue properly Next up, we need to then start our main music in the gate. So inside of our gate, first of all, what we're going to do is set up a stop sound. So stop any music that may have been playing when we get to this scene. So we'll see this several times. Sound mixer dot stop all. We're going to see that we're going to do the usual. We're going to see that we're going to do several of these commands at the same time over and over. So we create our variable to hold our muse main, which is based on main muse, equal to a new instance of main muse. Create a variable to set up playing it, muse main play that's a sound channel type set that to muse main dot play from position zero play ten times and then muse main pause this is our number that keeps track of where to start playing the music for setting it to zero. Well, then we use it in these functions that we've got here waiting for us. Function, music, main, activate, and deactivate. So similar to before. Muse main play is equal to muse main dot play at the position we paused. Muse main pause and play 10 times. If we then exit the app, we need to keep track of that pause point. So muse main pause is set to muse main play dot position. Sound mixer dot stop all so that it stops any sound that may be playing and then return the muse main pause variable so that the pause and replay works properly. Okay, I'm going to test that. So I've got the main music playing. Next, I'm going to go to help. It's still playing. Nice. I'll press back. It starts over there. Good. I'll play. The one music cuts out. The other music starts up. 
I'm going through the house. Break the window. Break the painting. Go to the right hallway. Creatures coming at me. I'm dead. If I replay, the music starts over to the main music. I'm going to play that again. Go to the left hallway and exit properly. I win. I'm at the win screen and if I replay, music starts over. Okay, good. So it's coming along very well. Next. Next, we'll set up the sound for the bad ending. So once we get to the bad ending, we need to stop all previous sound. Sound mixer dot stop all. We'll create the variable for this. Muse end is end muse type new and muse parentheses var muse and play which is a sound channel type equal to muse and dot play starting from and this one uh, I think uh, I have in my notes that we want to start two seconds in. There's a little bit of a long pause before the main music starts there. So we'll say start two, 2,000 milliseconds in. We create our pause point. So muse and pause. That's a number. Setting it to 2,000 because we want to start in two seconds into the sound because it's kind of slow. And then we'll create our event listeners to pay attention to playing or pausing the sound. Native application dot native application dot add event listener parentheses event dot activate. Run the function fn and music activate. We'll define that function. This is based on an event of type event. Muse and play is equal to Muse end dot play at the point of the pause. Muse end pause. Play 10 times. OK, well, we need to set up when we deactivate native application dot native application dot add event listener. This time paying attention to the event of deactivate and run function end music deactivate. We need to define that. Which is based on an event of type event. This is the one that's a little more complex, but we've already done it two times. Muse and pause is equal to muse and play dot position sound mixer dot stop all return the muse and pause point to be able to use it in our app. And then we can test it. OK, so I've got a couple of errors here. 
uh, we're used to, of course, first of all, typing void at the end of a function, but nope, this one's going to return a value, which is a number, so that'll fix that. Then I also misspelled muse somewhere. Here we go, line 26. You may have seen it, but I didn't. And then when I compiled it, I got the error. One more thing. Oh, yes, uh, here, new instance of and muse. Okay, so a couple little errors, but fixed them pretty easily. Now we'll test it again. Title music, main music, and then I'll go, I'll go to get killed. And I'm dead. If I pause the game, music stops. If I return to the game, okay, as you test the game, you may hear uh, the music overlaps at a certain point when you exit and return to the game, and we'll fix that, but let's uh, then set ourselves up for the good ending. In the good ending, I want to play the music from the title, some good music. So to get our good music to play, we're going to add some code that was very familiar. We'll have the stop sound mixer stop all so that any previous music that was playing stops. And then we're going to say to play the title music again. So muse title play is equal to muse title dot play at position zero. So restart the music at position zero at this point. So I'll test it. Main music, game music, going through the house, going to the good ending, good music, you pass the game. Now as you test it, you may hear music that overlaps once in a while, for example. For example, if I get to the end scene, I pause the game, and I return to the paused ending scene, where I lose. It's playing the bad ending music as well as the main game music. So that means we need to remove event listeners. So we get to the bad ending in a few different ways. When you take the hallway to the right, and you die from here, we've got action script at this point. When the creature gets to you, we've got action script line 96 in the hall right that takes us over to the bad ending. We've then got to remove the event listeners when we were in that other scene. So we first have the event listener in the gate to listen for the main music to play. Native application, activate and deactivate the main music. So I'm going to copy lines 7 and 8 from my gate layer from my gate scene to paste it into the bad ending. But I have to then say, remove event listener for both of those. Very important. Set remove event listeners so that the main music cannot replay at the bad ending. These event listeners are existing at all times, and therefore it may play at the wrong time. So we want to remove those event listeners when we're at the end of the game. So let's check it out. Title music, main music. I'm going to proceed to the bad ending. I 
I'm at the bad ending. Bad ending music is playing. I'm going to pause the game. I'm going to return to the game. Only the bad ending music plays. I replay the game. This time I'll go to the good ending. Left hallway, go straight to the exit. Good music. If I pause the game and return. Well, here it's playing two things. The bad ending music and the main music. So it's going to be something very similar to what we just did here. In the bad ending, I'm going to need to return remove the event listeners for, first of all, the main music, and then also the bad music. So here's an example where I would do this copying and pasting again before I do a big copy. I'm going to copy the event listener for activating the end music. Paste that at the bottom. Copy the event listener for deactivating the bad music. Change that to remove event listener. And all four of these, I need to copy them into my good ending. Now I'm going to copy that. I don't need those copies at the bottom of remove. Be sure to not leave those removes in, the, in this scene, because obviously we add the event listener and then remove it. So the point of this was that I can copy all those four frames to put it into the good ending, all those four lines, that is. So I've got the lines to deactivate the main music and deactivate the bad end music. So now I'll test it. Title music, main music. Proceeding to the left hallway and the good ending. Good end music. I'll pause. The good music continues to play, so we'll deal with that. But when I return from the pause, it's no longer mixing up the bad ending or the main title music. Okay, we're getting there. Well, obviously, what's missing here is we're playing the good music but not in the smart way of using the event listeners. So we can take that from the start. We need those, activate, and deactivate music event listeners in the good ending. So we've got these event listeners and remove event listeners. We've got the music playing at least for the first time and then keeping track of pausing and returning to the game. So let's check it out. Title music, main music. Go to the left hallway and go straight to the good ending. Good ending music. I pause the game, music pauses, I return to the game, only the good music plays. I replay the game, music starts over and I can go through the game again. And there it is. So that's the complete code to get our music working. It's a lot of repetitive stuff, but once you get the basics of it, then you're able to add the music to the various scenes. So you've got your, your music in every scene, and you've got a mood that you're setting from the happy sort of music when the game starts to very brooding and foreboding music as the game progresses to some sad ending uh, music and then some good ending music, and then you start again. So now you have all of the tools to have your game complete, all of the coding, this is all the coding that you need. Next, it's time for you to upgrade your assets. So some nice graphics, everything that you make it unique based on what you've done previously. 
and then we'll have time to work on the next Monday and Wednesday. This has been Victor Campos. See you next time.